Good morning, good morning, good morning. <clears throat> My voice is kind of raspy. I'm working through so many different heart-opening energies. I'm doing so much Reiki. I'm doing so much distance Reiki. And it's been amazing sharing my light and information with people. Um, I've actually been doing it for donations and opening mad hearts. And yeah, I've been doing mad, uh, mad virtual and distance healing. So if you're open to receive, I'm sending you some bright, bright, bright lights. And just all about you kind of stepping into your own power. Kind of like I'm building that for myself right now too, you know. All these pinks, all these yellows. Let's throw in some greens. I'm gonna put in some dark greens to help touch those deep root seated issues. All of that. I would call it greed, envy, jealousy, pride, deep, deep, deep emotional wounds and experiences and depths and truths. True, kind, considerate, caring that is only shown through expression, sharing. For some people, these places are frozen or broken and fragmented. Or I call them empty chi. Sometimes they're stagnant. There's a lot of different stuff. But these frozen places, I'm also sending some electricity, electromagnetic energy into those spots inside of you and your heart and the holes inside of you. Maybe you're aware and conscious and giving your own language to those experiences. Maybe you feel like you've been stabbed in the gut or the heart or the back or in the neck and you feel like you can't open up. I'm asking you to pay attention to this and recognize that you recognize this and that you choose to open up your yourself to, you could say, a god or something greater than yourself and like greater than anything you can imagine creating a space inside yourself to receive such a thing to really make you say wow miracles or maybe there is a god because i really there's like it doesn't make sense you know there has to be a, an orchestrator something that makes me think about the god energy that for those that are allergic to that word right <laughs> I hear people like, I'm out of here. Um, <laughs> it's about, um, I like to mention phantom DNA or like Fibonacci or just the perfection, the science of what is as is instead of without judgments and limits and conditioning and, and words just ruin things. So perhaps we can just let you come to find spirit or God or your higher self, your subconscious, the deeper divine, the the dominant gene. I really have this Google video I really want to share with you. I know I've mentioned it a few times. I'm going to have to figure out a way to put it on my playlist. I might put it on Trina's spiritual journey and I'll put it on um, some of my playlists. You know, all my playlists are available and those of you that are woke or whatever. <laughs> There's a, there's a couple of words on there that I, I forgot the name of my playlist, but if you're really seeking that information, I promise you'll find it. And if you want to find it and you want me to share that with you, you can email me. My email is wewanttrina at AOL.com. And for those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Trina Christine Mason. I'm 27 years old. I'm currently residing in old St. Augustine, Florida. And I'm... Trina. <laughs> you can call me a light worker, autistic, writer, storyteller, empath, intuitive, psychic, juggler, pro wrestler. Trina Christine Mason, right? I'm just myself. I'm just, it's the I am that I am. You know, I tell people all the time, it's not me healing you. It's, you know, it's not, this is not what you think. You know, I'm not, I wouldn't necessarily call myself a healer. That would, for me, be a little bit inappropriate because it's not me it's hard to explain okay i'm just holding space i it's the i am that i am it's never me it's spirit working through me maybe that is a better way of giving language to that for you so that you can um absorb that um i'm kind of going through a rough time on my own personal experience that's kind of how i became <clears throat> excuse me a, a path maker a way shower i've kind of been through a lot of my own personal experiences that have kind of enlightened me that have helped me personally, you know, and I've worked with like a lot of people and held a lot of space and grace and just Reiki or whatever you want to call me. It's been magical combining 
with all of you and um, doing what my soul has chosen to come here and do. And it's been really empowering to come step into my own personal power and do what I'm here to do after I have done all these other things. And I know there's other things that are like those things that I will still do. And I'll let my being speak for itself of who I am. And if you want to judge and condition and label that, that's up to you. But I do ask you not to separate and to stay tuned because it's just the I am that I am. And I know that you can see yourself inside of me too. So it's up to you to kind of like not be what we could call perverted and or like demented, right? Or thinking negatively, like some type of separation between you and me or me and this car. Like the illusion is that we're separate, you know, of this world, but not from it or something like that. Um, a lot of you have your own deep understandings of things and some of you just have no interest in going to these depths, but the those of you who do choose, you know, I'm here offering myself and my life, working for donations and um, equal energetic exchanges. That's most important. You know, you, if you want to receive something, I encourage you to put something out there, right? Like a good way of putting it is you have to think about your client as far as like what's in it for them. Why should they work with you? Why? You know, what What makes, what do you have to offer without your ego getting in the way and, and trying to be like, you need me. You know, because let me tell you that if anyone out there is saying that they're a healer and they can fix you and do this or that, please run away as soon as possible. Like, that is, that is usually a big red flag. I mean, unless you, it's important for you to go through that experience. Only you will know what you have to do for your own personal process of refinement for you to learn through habitual response and reaction, your ability to... <laughs> respond and react hold on um your response ability your ability to respond to the situations that are laying before you what i'm doing right now is kind of called psychic surgery as well i'm also really good at um the mind and reprogramming the nervous system i guess you can say and that comes from my own personal experience i battle a lot with self-destructive thoughts and self-doubt and constant denying myself myself and just like it was almost like I was addicted to self-harm and like emotional harm and like or like that I just became so comfortable and used to the experience I didn't know how to experience my experience any differently than I had experienced it and still I am constantly co-creating all these things and I know that I have hurt a lot of people and myself so if you're seeing this right now and I have held that please please forgive me you know and I'm working on forgiving myself that's probably the hardest part about all of it is you know not so much the person forgiving me but me forgiving me and moving on and just like and it's an energetic thing you know it has nothing to do oh man I feel bad for a lot of people I see the holes inside their hearts and their souls and it makes me want to share my soul and spirit and my love and light with them but I'll be honest they're just energy vampires who will just take and take and take until you have no blood left basically so you must be careful and selective with who what, when, where you're generous with your energy because, you know, your time is the one thing you can't buy back, you know. So many of you are putting a price tag on how much you're worth an hour, but you totally neglect that you can't buy back those hours, especially for that price tag. And, like, if you really realistically thought about yourself and what you choose and what you know you deserve and that you're worth, you have to give yourself permission. You're the only one who's going to know your truth. No one else is going to be able to validate things for you. And people that are validating you and stroking your ego, they really aren't serving you because sincerely, I strongly recommend almost someone like like me or a dominatrix or like somebody who will be real with you. I want to be like your mama, you know, somebody that's going to be real with you and call you out on your struggles and your humiliations and just recognize, help you accept where your blockages are and where you have accepted yourself and also where you haven't taken accountability or, um, credit. I mean, like attention, you really need to focus on your weak, your weak spots, right? I learned that from Lee. you know, I'm not going to teach a teaching without letting you know where I got that from. My ex-boyfriend, Lee, also a very close family friend who I still love and care about very deeply. Lee taught me about like taking our weakest points and making them our strongest angles, you know, and like, let me try to serve that to you in a way that I've like kind of processed it. So like the way that I thought about it is like, let's say, you know, Aunt Trina's really insecure around really pretty girls. 
And like, so if Trina knows this, if Trina avoids really pretty girls and like feels uncomfortable because like, yeah, maybe she struggles with her sexuality or just struggles with sisterhood or coming together with women instead of them trying to smash or trying to steal her boyfriend or like use her or whatever, right? Like, so Trina has to consciously put herself through experiences that show her that it is safe for her to grow here. It is safe for her to have friendships. There are I'm just, like, I'm just using that as an example. So, like, that's where I'm taking a weak point and making it my strongest, you know? Like, making sure that, like, I have sleepovers and pillow fights with girlfriends. We paint each other's nails and we got each other's backs and, you know, we're honest with each other and we're real. And we help another. We invest in each other energetically or financially or whatever. We just, we're bras, <laughs> sisters, <laughs> fam, you know? <laughs> and then I hear, um, I kind of hear some energy that's that I would, or, like... I would like to share with you a part of what of like who I would call my future husband. Um, this person has taught me something really heavily and um, it's about giving yourself permission. Giving yourself permission and then also showing future you how much you love you by putting in the energy now. Like for example, let's say um, your house is a mess. So the way that you show future you is you clean your house before you go to work. So when you come home, you have like this beautiful clean space that you can just really like lounge in when you're at home. Um, I do apologize. I'm apologizing because I have to go. And if you would like some personal attention, please contact me, send me an email. If you don't, if you're struggling with money, communicate that or like make an oath to me that you'll pay it forward in the future when it comes to you and as you can and honor your word uh, I'm willing to hold space for people like that I am and then what I and the reason why that is is because there's some of you that are just so overly giving that like it helps me like not feel so bad when someone doesn't have it you know because I'm like Crea creator has provided for me you know someone else has held a space for me so that I can give someone else more energy and, you know if you want to do that I encourage you to like you can do PayPal or however way you choose to send, right? Like, there's all these millions of ways that the internet exists. So, I'm using that as an example or whatever. And then, um, like, you would attach a note and be like, this is for someone else's um, healing. Or this is for this. Or I really would love to buy these shoes. Or I saw this. You know, and maybe I reject your offer and I give you your money back. Or, like, who knows? It, it, I'm just using that as, like, a principle thing. Like, a lot of people, you don't realize, like, how much you could really get anything you want. Like, let's say someone's walking down the street and you see this lady with this bag and it reminds you of your grandma. And, like, you really want it. I bet you if you offer that lady 200 bucks right then and there, she might just take your offer right then and there. You know, or maybe even less, you know, but maybe you won't even offer. Or we won't even open up how it reminds you of your grandma and how much it would just, like, mean so much to you and bring comfort to your experience. There's so many things that you're not, like like giving yourself permission to have and then let me tell you the other side of the spectrum where you're holding on to like so many items and things that just like for what like there's no reason for it other than like maybe you spent money on it well there's someone that will really value that and appreciate it maybe you can't sell it maybe you need to give it away to really learn that lesson of attachment and giving but it's up to you to be mindful and recognize that there's nothing you can take to the grave except for this one thing that you own right john zen green words your body. You don't know anything about your body, your cells, your being. You're not even being patient with yourself. You're keeping yourself so distracted, so lost in the matrix and in la-la land and in your comforts that you lose sight of what's most important. And that's you, loving you and taking care of you. I'm not asking you to be a Satanist and really worship yourself like that, okay? But did you know that Lucifer actually means light and knowledge? And so is Illuminati. So that's all that really means that they just worship knowledge. And there's all this sacred knowledge and information and colors and psychology that's used against you in your subconscious constantly. And it's with your consent you play along. And if you could recognize this, you could orchestrate your reality so strong. Recognize your conscious language, the spelling that you spill to your subconscious. These spells, all these things that you're creating. Again... I know I've been, I just can't stop giving. I love you so much. So I choose to serve. I have so much work I have to do. I need to go deal with this. I don't own a printer and I'm just going through hell to say the very least. And I'm learning so much stuff the hard way. I'm in my own financial struggle and my own mental and emotional struggle. So I'm trying to kind of separate myself from these burdens, you know? So this is me. This is me and where I'm at and I accept where I'm at and I am building, I'm building, I'm building, 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 building. I am choosing to build a sacred space. I sincerely am saving up every penny I possibly can while simultaneously taking care of my bills and making investments towards others and myself and making sure that I'm tithing to the universe and things like that. 
And then at the same time, yeah, my fantasy is to buy a piece of property. I want to buy a piece of property. I want to own one. I choose to own one that is mine. And like, I'm getting confused. You know, I have to, I have like, I need to work on these choosings because am I choosing to buy a house or like a shop? And honestly, I would love to have both. Okay, I would. And then I've thought about taking my home and making it my shop and doing that and having like an office. But I also would love to keep that a sincerely sacred space. Like that's very vital to me. So I would love to have both. And I'm like, that's, I have an insecure subconscious thought that I can't do both or that I can't afford that or I'll never have that. I come from like, I guess you could say a poor past, poor mentality. And I'm trying and I'm struggling so hard and I'm attempting to un wire this heart where from my mind and my body that's all in co-creation with my existence so I'm trying to remove all of these remove these false limitations and boundaries and conditions that I've placed upon myself and keep accelerating in wherever I choose my next thing is school 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 I have so much mind I need to be kept busy I want to put myself through things that I struggle with like I struggle with mathematics and like I love science so I really really want to get through this so I need to hold this space for myself and my ultimate fantasy would be next that I could go to school full time that I would not have to worry about money or going here or there or doing this or that are struggling right where I can just fully surrender and go to school and put all of my attention my awareness into building this life that like I choose to live and building this family and making these children that I would love to bring to the planet and share with people and teach them and love them I mean I have so many different things and I just feel really heartbroken because there's like a lot of people that like won't give me permission to have the same things that I want for myself but they won't even give themselves permission to have those things either so I kind of completely empathize with that yo God made me wait here for a reason because my bank teller just pulled up he's like the only dude that I'm comfortable with y'all only dude I'm comfortable with I'm kind of autistic and I kind of deal with all these things as a sensitive you know me I'll be honest I haven't officially been like diagnosed autistic and like Frankly, my ego would be kind of humiliated and doesn't really want to go through that. So, but like at the same time, at the same time, like I recognize my autistic traits and like it's purely motor and understanding, okay, and processing stuff. And I have a hard time processing and dealing with like select motor skills. And, um, it's not easy. Let's just say that, okay? It's not easy being me. I know that a lot of you only see my shine. I still have a beautiful shadow work video to make for you. And it's just me being patient with myself and all that good stuff. I know I've revealed a lot, little bits at little, little time, you know. Eventually, we are going to put together that. And it'll be really fun. And I'm thinking maybe I won't do the goth look or maybe I will. Or maybe I'll create fragments and I'll just do like a multiple series of shadow work videos. I have no idea, okay? I just know that I have a lot of information to share. I know I have a lot of ways of expressing myself. I have a lot of investments I've made and a lot of things that I need to let go of too, which is also why you've been channeled this message directly because it's from my personal experience that I'm just kind of struggling with that I learned from firsthand experience, you know? So... I am working on creating an online store. I'm thinking about listing some things on Etsy. There's some things that are very sentimental that I'm really struggling to let go that I'm going to have to find a good home for them because I know it's best for me to let them go. I know my worth. I know the worth of the things that I have invested in. I encourage you not to let things go for any less than you've paid. However, at the same time, if you really sincerely don't care and if you can afford to let it go, let it go go because there's somebody who's really going to love and appreciate that and I promise you the universe will repay you however at the same time if you're giving just to hold that space you know that's kind of also negative karma so understand what your intention is and where you're really going I was like was that my life coach <laughs> is there is that a sign like is that is that where we're going with our career Trina like was that really my yoga instructor slash life coach that I... If you haven't seen that episode, I take you guys to a life coach for my first time and you just... A lot of my show is, is like auditory. So if you're so fixated on seeing me, this might not work out. And I don't really want to open up a podcast, you know? Like this is, this is how I feel comfortable to be received and this is the way I'm choosing to give myself and myself to you and share myself with you. I love you so much. Please let me do my thing that I don't really want to do. This is my karma yoga. This is me doing what I don't want to do and finding a way to do it with love, you know? And maybe 
if you want, you can reward me for all my hard work and pay it forward. Hey. <laughs> Partial joke. Excuse my ego, okay? That's that's connected to my insecurity that, like, I won't be able to afford to go to school or buy a house or pay my taxes or buy George Kitty Litter or eat or have a roof over my head if I don't have people like you investing and believing in me. And maybe there's some truth in that. And, I, I mean, I don't know. So I'm just working through this and, you know... I'm just I'm just doing me and I'm trying not to be a selfish prick while also simultaneously moving ahead, helping others and expanding my awareness constantly. You're amazing. Thank you for your time today. God bless you. Take care of yourself. Namaste. Jai Bhagwan. Peace.